Hey, kitty girls, welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, Season 16, Episode Number 6, and it's Sunday, March 17th, also known as St. Patrick's Day for those of you who celebrate. Aaron Gobralis, or whatever it is that you do, drink your green beer, fuck a leprechaun, get your gold coin, hunty, whatever that may be. Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> Girl. For those of you that don't know who we are, my name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome to the show. This is going to be... Interesting. A thing. Yeah, it's, um, it's a thing. It's yeah. a thing. So for those of you that are just coming in now, hi, welcome to the show. Uh, this is where we kind of do a recap and discuss the latest two episodes of the most recent uh, U.S. season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, we're going to be discussing Work the World and Corporate Queens episodes number 10 and 11 um yeah we've we've got some thoughts on things got some thoughts and feelings and yeah, opinions to say the least mm -hmm. you ready to dive right in let's do it all right racers start your engines and may the best drag queen win Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> All right. So there's three categories we're going to be discussing um, in this segment. We're going to talk about the serves, which are the positive things, the swerves, which are the negative things, and the nerves. Nerves can be positive and or negative, depending on the execution. Swerves are basically road hazards. Serves are things where you're, you know, doing well in your laps of this drag race. And maybe the nerves, are they both? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I see what, I see what we, we got here. It'll be interesting uh, to have this uh, discussion. So, Damon, mm -hmm. who are you giving serve to out of these two episodes? Um, I'm going to give serves to Miss Safira for mm -hmm. her um, dominating the Spills the Tea um, mini challenge. Oh, that's what I... that means. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I was Did like, think I don't, else? I was like, I don't remember her spilling tea in confessional. <laughs> now I, no, 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 you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. The game, the mini no, game. I'm talking about the game. Yeah. Um, congrats on her like 15th win or whatever. I don't know. Like with many challenges and many challenges and whatever. <laughs> um, but the thing I loved the most about it was the, the, Things I think she was winning were things we knew she like the most whatever were like things we would feel like you know the most flirtatious the most generous those kind of things and then there are a couple of other ones that I thought was really fun and then she walked away with um, thirty four hundred dollars I'm pretty sure actual doll hairs yeah that was the best thought... reaction of the season when Rue says you win twenty five hundred dollars and you add like the nine hundred. And Safira was like, "Oh, oh, oh, that, oh, that, that, that too. Like that's real. <laughs> like that was that was the best part because I think all of the queens were like, this is just a game. Like it's not, yeah, you know, it's like points. And they, yeah, and they did, but they all apparently won the yes. little um, cash tips from that, which I thought was kind of cute. I think it was a great way to make that mini challenge extra special because right. no, while there was a winner." They didn't really – they got the 2500 but then they got a little more. But everyone got something, which I thought right. was kind of cool. Right. So, yeah. Agreed. Cool for them. Safira is amazing. Let's just keep saying that several times. Yes. I'm sure we will in this episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gary, what about you? Um, I want to give serve to Q for this most recent episode for their coming out mm. um, and for their runway in conjunction with it it was very thematic i will say i did not see this coming not no. that this is a thing that you would predict or know but when you think back to the very first season mm -hmm. and on gina and that like amazing moment in which she talked about being hiv positive um and how far we've come and it's 16 mm -hmm. seasons in, and Q reveals her, her truth, her story. Um, yeah, I did not see that coming. And as a person who works in HIV prevention as a career, I was so proud of her. Because she got the talking points. She knew what she was saying. Um, 
And not everyone who is a person living with HIV needs to be an advocate for the broader like community Correct. or the topic. But being on a platform like this, there's probably a little pressure, you know, to to want to say things or or whatever. And everyone approaches it in their own way. So I was very very um, pleased with her. We find out an untucked. <laughs> Um, and, and actually some of Untucked has really been kind of pivotal. So this was one of those episodes because then yeah. Q gets a message from home from her husband. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I got a little worried cause of course, cause of the edit, I thought she's going to have like a hyperventilating episode. Yeah. Like moment breakdown that, that made me nervous, but she was, she was okay. But it was really good to hear that like she has this person in her life who's like so helpful and was the one who came to her when she got her diagnosis, even though they were mm-hmm. hours away. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the thing I think that people don't necessarily realize in today's day and age. Yeah, it's 2024, and we're 40 plus years like since the beginning of the HIV epidemic here in the U.S. But we still have a part of our you know broader national community that doesn't understand the infection and the disease that it turns into right. and treats people a certain way. Uh-huh. And it's still a very emotional journey for people to go through when they get diagnosed. And as a person who works in that field and has, like, you know, been of assistance to people going through their journey, I was just so happy to hear that she had her husband for that. And then she yeah. decided to honor that in her self designed couture, you know, fashion that she puts together this Keith Herring homage fabric. Yes. With the high collar, the red ribbon, the big bow, like it was definitely, yeah. like, and spot on for the '80s runway theme. Yes. So like I yeah, that yeah, yeah. was that was gorgeous. Um, I'm still like thinking about it because it just it. I again, the part like the main parts like it was a Keith Haring homage, so it wasn't actually Keith Haring, which I think is I appreciate people saying that off the bat because right. Um, that gets a lot of that gets really muddy sometimes. Um, the way the elements worked, mm-hmm. and then added it to like the '80s, and then it kind of has this other meaning, right? Because the '80s was the sort of start of the 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 um, you know ACT UP and HIV and all right. like having these conversations and such. So it just made it all the more poignant that this outfit reflected that time period um and 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 it was it was a gorgeous garment like let's get it and all of the elements that added to it that made it feel very planted in the 80s were there um i noticed the um the way the puff kind of sleeves went out and just sort of like gave that 80s like shoulder pad look i love that Mm -hmm. and um and it, while it was very 80s, it was still very kind of poignant. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. very lovely. Gorgeous gowns, gorgeous, gorgeous gowns. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like, I think Q definitely, like, served up on that. And and then, I mean, in a way, as a sidebar, I felt, like, for Nymphia, because she comes out in the Grace Jones, like, homage thing. Which mm-hmm. also had Keith Haring like illustration style on it, and yeah. I was like, "Well, that's kind of sucks." Like that <laughs> that you went after Q simply because like, yeah, like you you kind of like while while individual and and beautifully done, it's like mm-hmm. it's not supposed to be a comparison, but it automatically turns into that, unfortunately. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 that was a uh, was interesting. All right. Let's uh let's talk about swerves. Uh, who are you? Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I know what this is about. Uh, what do you give? What do you give it a swerve for? So I wrote down mm-hmm. throwing the cape in. Um, okay, this is in re- reference to Miss um, Maya Amon LePage during the um, most recent um, lip sync for your life. Um, girl, um, um, what are you doing? Oh, you mean that? You mean you mean this? What the fuck are you doing here? 
Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was it was so again I I know they know each other. So bottom two, hey if, if you're not spoiled by now, too late. Um bottom two, the most recent episode was um Maya and Morphine. They're both from Florida. I think both from Miami. Um they're the two girls. They've known each other. Blah 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 blah. Right. I mean, you um, you knew this was going to be yeah. done by production. Yeah, yeah. So they both fall into the bottom. I think, rightfully so. Um, Maya has been. Her outfit was this um, leotard, like like leotard moment with this um, added buff ruffle of fabric on the like that fell to the floor like this cape of fabric that was to the floor um and apparently the cape was detachable and horribly so let me just point that out i'm just gonna say this right now i'm gonna say this i, I you know i appreciate you maya and i don't know if this is one of the many outfits you, that you had designers that had issues with i don't know but like the velcro was bad in the back you could mm. see it, and it just did not look good. Um, I knew when you walked on for the runway that that cape was able to come off, mm. and it left this big black like line. Either it's buttons or Velcro, whatever it is. It looks like Velcro, but I'm not looking up close. Whatever it is, is terrible. So the outfit wasn't the greatest either. Just going to be honest with you. Um, I don't know what you were thinking. I don't know if that wig was turned around. I don't know. Something was going on. <laughs> yeah. There were so many things wrong with this moment. So I, you double, triple down with this, and then you take it off during the lip sync, and you throw it over morphine while she's doing a, like, standing. Back she's kind of back bend like mm -hmm. moment with her you know choreo she's chore she's doing some choreo with this number and you throw it over her and i'm like i don't know if you did that intentionally i'm gonna assume that you did because it felt very intentional how could it not be intentional right. there's, there's no way to do it by accident in my opinion yeah. and because well i'll put it like this because I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna say it was intentional because of your actions afterwards during the run during the, the performance. Mm. You were doing, and I'm. I, ooh, I hate comparing girls like this, but you were doing very Mimi on first girl. Mm. You were doing very much jumping in front of the queen, moving in, you know, getting in front of her, all that kind of shit. The things I hate so much during the lip sync like this, during the lip sync for your life, I hate like the cutting in front, the trying to hog the attention, what have you, it just become very desperate. And given what we've seen of you, given your quote unquote lip sync assassin, you know, you know, leanings, it felt very dirty and I didn't like it. Right. So that's why I'm giving it my swerve because it just, right. it, it, it felt like you were, you were flinging desperately, literally, um, to get this fourth win, because this was your fourth time. Mm -hmm. You were, you were, you were, you were flinging desperately, and um, I didn't put this in, but I'm gonna give some props to Miss Morphine for rolling with the punches in this and adding to it. Like when I loved it when Maya did like one of her backflips, and she just just yawned it i was like bitch yes <laughs> like yes give that spill that tea let them know she's done this shit so many times already well right and and that's the thing about this so yeah this the infamous like dress cape moment thing um i mean in the edit they make it a lot more dramatic than it probably mm -hmm. was in the instant but it was a little dirty and um I, I mean, I the moment she did it, I was like, I oh okay, I guess you and your feelings, and this is how you're this is how you're gonna do this lip sync, and that's unfortunate. Now I will say this to Maya's credit, I don't want to say defense. 
it has been said, Maya said in an interview, and I think, was it Bussy that covered this? Maya, the day she is getting ready, the last 24 to 12 hours to fly to L.A., five of her outfits were not, yeah. like, delivered. Yeah. And so at, like, four in the morning or five in the morning with one hour left, she had already thrown in the towel and was like, I'm just not going to go. Like, she was just going to peace out and not even go to L.A. And... I don't know if it was her crew, her family, her drag family, whatever, like kind of rallied around her and she just packed a whole bunch of shit. I think this outfit was one of those things that she packed that she kind of tried to modify because I was like, what is with this cat suit, like skin tight, like sort of weird, sheeny, emerald green, like goblin Mm -hmm. thing that you're wearing, girl? Like, like the, the poofy things on the, like the shoulder straps do not make this 80s, like. No. It was just one of those things where I was like, okay, I don't understand what's going on here either. So I feel like this was probably one of her outfits that was like she just had to deal with. Throw me in just to grab, yeah. Um, Something. Yeah, I don't know. Like that, So I'm not, you know, saying that that's an excuse. No. It's unfortunate. Um Right. But, yeah, like, I mean, production really did kind of, like, team up this whole thing about the two of them and kind of pitted against each other. And then they had this, like, little catty moment on the mm-hmm. couch where they were kind of, like, Maya was, like, really dissing um, Morphine. And yeah. then Morphine in Confessions is talking about Maya. And I was like, okay, like, y'all have opinions about each other. Yeah. And I honestly thought going into the lip sync before seeing what happened – I expected Morphine to go home. Mm. I thought Maya's going to pull something out. And even though she, in my opinion, shouldn't be sticking around, she's going to get another week. Right. And they're going to keep her and Morphine's going to, you know, boohoo and go home. Um, And then as it played out, I was like, oh, 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 okay. And I was like, you, you pissy. Like, you mad. Like, you acted out a fool. Yep. And that doesn't ever really go well. And on top no. of it, I was like, you already kind of played, like, like you already played all your chits, girl. Like, in, a, in mm-hmm. an earlier round of this card game, you already played them. Like, you've done the backflips. Everyone's already seen that. You took off your shoes. You took off your wig. Without another wig underneath. With a beanie. Like, you've done things that people expected your ass to go home on, and you got away with that. So my feeling on it is, like, you are kind of holding on by a thread going into this one, as it is. So, like, I honestly thought when she was doing backflips, I was waiting for the hair to come off. Like, I was expecting the slow-mo, dramatic music, like, the wig just starts to come off, and it becomes this big, like, scandalous moment. And it didn't. Which was amusing to me because it was the one thing I was expecting to happen. <laughs> and they're like, nope, the hair stayed on. And I was like, okay. Like, but anyways, we'll we'll circle back around on this. So what about you, Gary? Um I don't know how else to say this. So back to episode ten, um Work the World. Talk about shoehorning in another property thing, money making, whatever. So the Work the World Tour, you know, this number is supposed to be this, like, you know, anthem to get people to go out and vote. Which has been an ongoing theme for several recent seasons. Understandably Mm -hmm. so. Like, you know, there's a lot of shit going on in politics and people need to be engaged whether they believe it or not. Yeah. Um, But the Leland anthem? Eh. I did, like, here's the thing. I'm hot cold on Leland. Like, I realize that a lot of people think he, like, does really, really good stuff, and he can, but sometimes Uh his stuff's not that good. And and this wasn't, this wasn't a poop emoji. Like, it wasn't bad, but I was like, ahem. So, it was, it was underwhelming. It was underwhelming. Yeah. Can I be honest? Yeah. Can I be honest? Can I be honest? Um, as Don says all the time, um, I don't remember it. Right. So here's the thing. I remember three things out of the performance, not the song. 
Right. I remember I remember playing Jane kind of seeming a little off. Right. I remember Morphine rising to the occasion mm-hmm. and being a fucking like pop star. Mm-hmm. And I remember Mother Safira yes. like cleaning the floor with these bitches. Right. And and she was like literally like funk and yes. was like giving it. Right. So there's a part of me that's like, why did we do this? Why did we do this? Because to me, it was obviously a vehicle for Safira. Like, <laughs> like that's all I kept thinking when the performance was done. I was like, I'm, I'd be mad if I was one of the other girls because I'd be like, well, it was obvious like, who this was meant for, like who it favored or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, and that's not a criticism of Safira. I just think production and like the whole, I don't, it just. Yeah, it's a thing. Baby. It's becoming a weird fucking thing. Yeah, and so, then there's all this but, been talk about how, like, the color orange was missing. Like, it w- it kind of looked like there was supposed to be, like, the, the, the six main colors of the pride flag type thing or whatever. Uh-huh. But, like, orange specifically was missing, so there's been this discussion online about, like, which queen was supposed to be orange and wasn't there and blah, 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 and this that. I... Kids, I don't know, and I kind of don't care because, again – wasn't that spectacular? <laughs> it's it, I don't know. It was weird. I kind of wish they hadn't yeah. done it. And then again, I'm like, well, we know it happens. Yeah. And we're so close to the end now. And so I'm like, so in another one or two episodes, we're going to have another freaking music video thing. Mm-hmm. At least if they follow formula, it's what's kind of be coming before we get to the final four or whatever. Anyways. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah. there's that. <laughs> so there's that. All right, so let's move on to Nerve. And I think I know what you mean with, with what you wrote down. Uh, so let, yeah. let's let's talk about that. So I put down Plains Nerves. They are showing. Yeah. Very much so. So, so episode 10, no one went home, right? right? But what ended up happening, if you were looking at the episode, was... Um, the last person that went to the back before Morphine and um, Safira were clean the renters was Plain. And it seemed very clear that she wasn't 100% in this. She had a unity potion. She didn't use it on herself. She gave it to, to Nymphia. Nymphia. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute as well, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, and then, so she's the last one called. So we go to the start of this episode and Plain's having some feelings. Plain mm-hmm. is showing some nerve. And the reason I'm saying this is because why I'm giving nerves for this is because either this is a very, very clever ruse by Miss playing because she's playing this game and she's been playing this game this whole time Mm -hmm. or this was a genuine like I'm having a moment because I almost went home kind of feeling because she normally when 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 Don and them say stuff to her she doesn't give a shit but for some reason like this moment at this time, Dawn saying something. Right. She was like, oh, so I'm going to have some words. I, I have some feelings to express. And she goes, she lashes out at, at Dawn. Right. About her outfit and what she's wearing and what she's doing and calling her outfit like glamour and what have you. It wasn't that great. I'm just saying. Which, uh, which outfit great. wasn't that great? The green. The green. Like, right. So here's the thing. The, I thought Dawn, in her honesty, was was totally in the right to point out mm-hmm. to plain Jane that like while it is a pretty gown, there's nothing that spectacular about it. Do you know no. how many pageants that damn gown has probably been to in various right. iterations? Like there was nothing that great about it. On top of it, plain, it's not even your damn dress. No, it's not. Because it's not your it's skin not. tone. No. Like everybody knew it by looking at it. So, mm-hmm. like, you were incredibly defensive this about was, this. This was someone else's gown. 
that you borrowed for this uh, this this moment. And there's nothing wrong with borrowing a gown. Agreed. Like Agreed. I just Our... watched um uh give it to me straight with Maddie Morphosis and Joey J. Joey J talked about how when they were on the season, I think it was season 13, they said, "I didn't know that you could just borrow outfits for the season and then give them back." Like like because they said they showed up in the room and then they saw what the other queens brought and they were like, okay, well, I sure as hell ain't going to win. Like, I mean, they figured that shit out <laughs> real quick. And right. I appreciated that authenticity, but they said, like, you know, being a girl from Wisconsin or whatever, they were like, I didn't know. Like, I had no idea yeah. that, you know, yeah, that that was exactly. a thing you could do. And this is just, it just, again, it, it for me, it just it emphasized, whether, again, whether this is plain actually having these, like, like moments of faltering right. or if this is a part of the, this game that she's playing, which it could be, it could go either way in all honesty, it could go either way. Um, but it does bother me that it was enough of a, a, a concern for her when she's defending this outfit that she has on that, is is either clearly not hers or is not that great because i i it's, you got very defensive for something that you would have never gotten defensive for before defensive for before right like like she so far all season has been very water off a duck's back mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. not phased nonplussed whatever right i right. you know and this time I think she felt a little cornered because I think she felt most of the queens in the room were all in agreement and mm-hmm. she didn't care for being on the outs. And she mm-hmm. also like, I think she did take it personally. And I mean, and she went in hard on Dawn. Yes. And I was like, so. Whoa. And so I love the confessional moment when morphine is like, Ooh, and miss, miss Jane, she is right. Right. She's like, <laughs> She is correct, Mama. And I was like, yes, yes, yes she is. Like, mm-hmm. she can defend it all she wants, and she can say that she's not upset or whatever. And I'm like, well, actions speak louder, honey. Like, and you mm-hmm. were pressed. Mm-hmm. You were you were Panini. You were not, like, <laughs> having that in that moment. Like, and you really decided to come for Dawn. And, uh, and here's a little, little thing. Um... I kind of feel like Don sort of deserved it because Don so, has been a shady bitch all season Dawn, long. Don is an instigator. Point right. Step, right. You know, like point blank period. Don is, and she revels in it. And sometimes she well, wants to get these reactions. I agree. And there was a weird edit. If you caught it, Plas- or plasma jesus jane gets up and walks over and then she like decides to have the moment because she's got to stand and it's a power dynamic move because she's standing and dawn's sitting and she does the finger wave and she's like you you know pointing out dawn's boo-boo to fool and this nightmare ghoul thing and blah blah blah, blah. and she's just like kind of starting to rip her to shreds and then she goes and she sits down but there's a weird cut in the edit and Dawn suddenly is rubbing pla- – or why do I keep wanting to call her Plasma? Jesus. She keeps rubbing – she starts – she already is rubbing, I think, planes back and talks about how gorgeous the gown is. Right. And I was like, mm. all right, something happened. I think it right. got a little bit more heated or something happened that Dawn mm. literally backtracked and apologized. Mm. Or, like, realize that she had hit a nerve or she crossed a line or something happened in that moment. Because I think all of them had didn't realize that that, that was a Jane thing. Sorry. I don't know why I'm getting an, an alert at this moment. That's very rude of you. How dare you? Anyways. Don't you know what I'm doing? God. Sorry. I'm recording anyway. a fucking podcast. Um but what about you? Oh, go ahead. No, so I was going to say, like, I think that Dawn may have realized, I think the whole crew, not the crew, the cast, may have realized, like, oh, we've never seen Plane like this before. Mm-hmm. And apparently she has a breaking point. So I do, I, I, I do think Dawn, like, apologized immediately in that moment. We just didn't get it in the edit. Get it. Right. It was, it was, it was weird. Anyways. 
Um, huh. So um, I'm going in the other direction with Nerve. Uh, <laughs> Mother Sephira's All Start and Runway. Listen, mm. I'm just going to call this shit out. I believe in in the in the preseason Meet the Queens. Mm-hmm. It was revealed that she has applied. And I kid you not. I'd have to look it up. I thought it was revealed that she has applied 13 times. And it is season 16. And I was like She was starting to feel at this point it ain't never going to happen. But all those times gave her the preparation to, like, put things together. And she shows up, and I'm like, what is with her and Nymphia? Like, they are bringing all stars level, like, stuff to the runway. The running joke of the season is, how did this fucking bitch get all this shit packed? To come from Philadelphia to L.A. Yes. From the flower outfit to the pumpkin outfit to the, like, the big, you know, sapphire blue ball gown deal with the Marge hair. Like, I mean, like, she has had some incredible looks. Yes. I'm like, girl, you got some goddamn nerve. Like, I am proud of you, and I will give you the coin, and I have been in your camp pretty much since the beginning of the season, and I do think you're going to make top four unless you fuck it up, which you better not, because I'm going to be real pissed. Mm-hmm. Just tell mm-hmm. me right now, girl. Like, I think you have what it takes to go all the way and win. Yeah. But, like, she is really slaying on this, like, runway thing, and I'm just like, yes. damn. I want to know how she got, like, a, like, three foot tall bouffant wig i mean if it flattens like okay like but even still how do you get that and that like big ass dress and like the fl- the big flower dress and like all these other right. things she's brought like i mean part of me is like there was some serious origami shit going on with your yes and, and all the stuff i think she definitely definitely did the trick which i'd heard of several seasons ago enough it's ever really been talked about much that she vacuum packed her stuff Mm -hmm. because if if you brought a steamer or you know that one supplied and there's an iron in your hotel room like i mean there's like things you can do and if she brought four pairs of those damn character shoes and she brought (laughs) glitter in a rainbow set for everything (laughs) <laughs> to like match her shoes to everything. I mean, like, there's some things that you can do because the because I think it was Willa made the joke that or was or maybe Alaska said something about like, well, obviously she didn't bring shoes. Like that's how she had room for the outfits <laughs> or something like that, which I thought was really funny. I was like, that's Sorry, fair. That's so fair. Looking at um, the Drag Race wiki, she's only auditioned eleven times. Okay, still, and she started, but she started drag in two thousand nine. Okay, so, so she's been doing it year, fifteen years. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, but the point is still well made that it, yeah, it's been over yeah. a decade that she's been applying. Yeah. And usually, I will say this: in my opinion, when a queen has auditioned or you know applied that many damn times, and you finally get on, yeah, it's not that You're impressive. Mm, oh. I was thinking the opposite. Never mind. No, like I, I honestly don't think I'm that impressed. Yeah. And I feel bad for you because that becomes a part of your story that you tried so hard to be out there that everybody's like, okay. And this is different for me. I feel like I'm like, how interesting that you haven't been on yet. And you are like, you are pro professional. You are mm-hmm. like, you are hatched. You are ready. You are like definitively in such a space with so many things. Um, and I think she started to figure out the last couple of episodes that she's in with Rue. Mm. Because I see them kind of being a little more playful with each other. And Safira, I think, has started to figure out, like, Rue really likes her. So she don't have much to worry about. She just needs to not fuck it up. Yeah. But yeah, I... I 
her runway is. Like, that is the stuff I would expect her to bring when she comes back, not the first season. Yes. So, yeah, props to you, Momo. Um, as a sidebar, because, uh, yeah. Um, so, Safira is the leading queen with the most amount of money for the season so far. Um, she has taken home, well, as of this episode, most recent, she has um, more than almost doubled, pretty close to doubled what the second place person is, which is Nymphia. Wow. So, uh, Saphir is at almost 23,000. Wow. I know. And so the entire season so far, earnings have been 74,600, which is some coin. And Safira has 30% of it. Yeah. So. Wow. I'm hoping that after taxes, that pay for some of that shit, including the extra, <laughs> including the extra baggage fees or whatever the fuck you did yep. like, to get your shit Something. there. Wild. Something else. Anyway. You ready to move on? Yes. Let's All right. All right, at times for snaps and eye rolls. These are the uh, highs and the lows. These are our hits and misses from these particular episodes. Um, in this case, uh, Damon, who we give it snaps to? <laughs> I, you know, this this one sound cue has gotten a lot of play this particular episode. Girl, I just want to say, let's talk about it. Q is. Bitter. And I'm giving snaps to it because it just is showing and I'm loving it. It's great fucking TV. It's very like Jan from um, mm -hmm. that season. Mm -hmm. It's just this like, oh, because it's been showing for like the past a few couple, few episodes. Oh, but this uh, last episode. This last episode in particular. Though. Like, I, I'm just going to call it out. Yeah. When Safira was announced as the winner, it was totally appropriate for the edit to go zoom in on Q and to see the look on her face. Mm -hmm. Because I have to admit, I thought it was either going to be plain Jane or Q was going to be the winner. Not Safira. Right. Not Safira. I did not see that coming. And the moment... Rue announced her name. I, I literally gasped. And I was like, what? I was shook. Shookest. So, and it just, in my opinion, Q has every full right to be as bitter <laughs> as, like, drinking lemonade, like, lemon juice straight with no sugar. Like, mm -hmm. bitter, bitter, bitter. She has every right to be. Because I, I, I was like, what the fuck yeah. just happened? It was very. It just was very interesting to me. I was a little surprised by it. I will admit, I was a little surprised, given all of the build up that we've gotten this episode. Mm. Um, it was funny for me because we were watching. We watch, you know, um, like like if we're watching it live, we watch it live, so it would be the episode and then untucked. Right. So we watched the episode, it finished, and then we watched untucked. And it was funny to me listening to some of the things Q was saying in Untucked and her being really excited and happy and feeling like this is a thing and then being like, you sure about that? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> this one? Are you sure? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the narrative was leaning very heavily towards Q. Very heavily. This episode. I, I will agree with that. And here's what yeah. my thought has been just now while we were talking. I thought if plain Jane had won, Q would have been okay. Mm. She would have been disappointed because she mm. thought she was going to win, but it was her scene partner. It was her skit, like, you know, sister, yeah. like they worked on it. They felt they knocked it out of the park. They got recognized for basically being the best. Mm -hmm. So 
Yeah. Like, I think she would have, she would have swallowed the pill. Yeah. And, and just kind of put a smile on her face, but. It just, it, 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 it felt really good. And, and, and not only did it show like during the like announcement, Q's energy was gone from like that moment for oh, yeah. the episode. Like you see her in like the like walking back on the stage, like when the queens like they say, you know, you know, love yourself how you know she's basically like twirling her her the ribbons on her outfit and her face is just dead oh, yeah. face. There's there's no more masking. She's like yeah. she's out. She's she is out. feeling walking, a certain way. Her walking back to the you know, I'm sure like Safira saw her face as they're walking and then, you know, you know, then she had to stand next to her. Like, Jesus Christ. It was just so much. And I, I ate every, every little bit of it, every little bitter bit of it. Like it just so good. Ugh. Well, and so apparently according to the edit, there's going to be a whole thing about this, at the beginning yeah. of the next episode. And, I'm kind of hoping it's like the beginning of the last episode. Mm. Yeah, the beginning of the last episode between Morphine and Sephira. Morphine and, and oh, how do you mean? In the beginning, when they were all sitting on the yeah, couch, yeah, 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 yeah. and then Morphine was like upset, but she was kind of just you know whining, you know, yeah. and and so she was kind of like me, 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 you know, and she kind of gets in Sephira's face a little bit, and then, <laughs> then she pulls her wig off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was not as dramatic as like people were thinking it was gonna be necessarily. Yeah. I was I was howling. Like she just boop, picked that sucker right up off of Safira's head and the look on Safira's face because she apparently did not know that was coming. And I was yeah. like I'm like, this is some kiki, like this is some fun, yeah. like just sisterly shit. And Morphine's not really mad. She's you know, she's a little pressed because you know, hurt. she wanted she's to peeved. win. Right. But yeah. You know, at the same time, you know, you have to recognize game and Sphera, yeah. like, you know, was killing it. So I'm yeah. hoping the same thing happens in the beginning of the next episode. But Q has been a bit emotional. And this mm -hmm. was a, this was a challenging episode for her. You know, she came I'm out sure. and talked about stuff. So I think she, you know, is very much in that frame of mind. And so I agree. This yeah. is probably, you know, is, is deservedly bitter about things. Yeah. Yeah. God yeah. <laughs> what about you, Gary? Um, oh, mm. honey, honey. Mm. So earlier you were talking about the whole thing that happens between morphine and uh, Maya. Maya. Uh-huh. Morphine, as much as she's kind of annoyed me this season, because she's the main, like, narrator talking head, mm -hmm. and, like, everyone is talking about how beautiful she is, and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Like, it wasn't until, what, two episodes ago? Was it episode 10? When she revealed about her um, non-binary status it was either 10 or 9 right I say. it's recent but when that came out i was like oh suddenly things make more sense to me because honestly i was like is she gonna announce transition after the season's over like is that where all of this is going because that's that's the vibe i've been getting but then when mm. she announced being non-binary, I was like, oh, 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 oh. Like, right. Now things are kind of falling into place about, like, her her gender neutrality sort of, like, being femi, mm -hmm. but, like, not. Right. And, like, you know, why the mug is, like, so crisp and the running jokes about her being, you know, like, a Sephora manager. And, and, and it's just been this whole thing. So all that said. So we get to the rival like, lip sync, right, of episode 11. And it's her and Maya. And then Maya pulls her stunt. And I was so proud of Morphine for taking that moment and, like, twisting it around and turning it into a good thing. That she grabbed that capelet and then threw it behind her but held on to it and then turned around and, like, sort of 
a matador bolero like whipped it around and threw it off the stage and i was like oh i was like this bitch is in the moment she is not yes. having it she is not allowing this stuff and yeah. then and then pulls the stunt of all stunts in any lip sync for physicality that I have ever seen. I think her her non-drop like split mm-hmm. is better than like Evie Oddly's backbending gymnastics. Mm. Like at first I was like, oh, okay, this is a stunt. But like Dawn said, like at first you're like, oh, okay. And then, oh, oh, and now it's weird and it's getting awkward. And then it goes back again and you're like, oh my God. Like, yeah. and I was like, holy shit. Because yeah. I was like, the amount of muscle control you have to have to hold your legs like plank rigid style and just keep yourself basically fucking right. levitated in right. heels. Mama. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was blown away because I was like and then the longer it went, I was like, oh, she she knows the song. She knows what she's doing. She's waiting for the moment. The moment. See. This that was. um... Are you sure? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I'm sure. Sorry. That was (laughs) defining like defying gravity, like like it just like holding that 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 non-split split moment just like holding it there was just oh it was so sweet because she knew what she was doing and i, I agree yeah. with you. i think there was something very powerful about that i mean it was reclaiming it and yes. and, and throughout the, throughout the routine the lip sync just fuck maya like i'm mean, like like it no no right very much that like that's why I, I, I that's why I think it's masterful because there is a way to execute a lip sync and to and to be the better person. And that is how I felt Morphine handled that situation. Absolutely. And and the downside is it made Maya look the fool. Yeah. And we already talked about the Maya side of things. That's why I was like when you brought it up and I was like, well, we'll talk about Miss Morphine yeah. later because she totally redeemed and yeah and sent her home and i was like yeah. she deserved you know deservedly so yeah even though i personally don't think morphine's gonna make top four but that's fine like i i don't i don't dis- i don't disagree with that like i okay so looking at this most recent runway mm-hmm. seeing what the other girls did and then what she did like by a side, like let's fuck that. But like I'm talking right, about right, like right. the other girls, like thinking about like Nymphia and 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 Plain and Q and 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 Safira, like the out the looks that they put out there, right? And then Morphine's look just did not reach that level. It just didn't. Right. It was cute. Don't get me wrong. It was cute, and it was. 80s ish but it wasn't right enough it needed more and that's where i think sometimes morphine doesn't go the extra like the extra mile the extra the extra step yeah and it's weird because i just had this vision i was like i'm surprised but maybe this isn't her her style but i was just thinking like oh she would have killed it if she pulled off a Jackie Collins dynasty, like mm-hmm. power suit, structured like jacket and a in a um pencil skirt with like a big ass hat. Like mm-hmm. like she totally could have pulled that right out of the eighties and like and had yeah. like cro- cropped it, like cut it in a way that gave her like a waspy kind of waist. Like, mm-hmm. like what I'm realizing is I'm kind of talking about a thing that like de- detox would do. Yeah. But right, right, right. morphine's got enough of a body on her that she could have really like delivered like proportion kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I agree. 
I don't like so yeah like it was it was it just it yeah. like I don't I'm I'm liking morphine don't get me wrong I'm thinking I'm I'm liking them in a way like I, I'm appreciating yeah. um uh but there are queens in the competition currently that will are very easily outshining her not that she's not shining right. just well it it's it's i mean it usually happens though right like every season yeah. you get the queens that are obviously going to be the finalists and mm-hmm. the rest are not and right behind the finalists are the ones that go pretty far and they do pretty well and they are skilled and that kind of stuff but it does become a little uncomfortable because it seems like you know you are playing nationals and they're playing olympics like you know there's mm-hmm. there's just the strata or this level of difference yeah um so that being said, before we get into the last parts, um, I really do feel like it's Dawn and Morphine that are next. Dawn, Dawn absolutely, I think, is going to be next to go. Um, mm. Not not that I, I don't think Dawn isn't talented or whatever, but I'm kind of like, mm, I hope you see this the well, writing on the wall, girl, because like, you're, well, you're kind of, I think, there's, yeah. you're not really presenting anything else. Like when you look at who's left, let's just I mean, just call it what it is. Like Right. There yeah. are queens that have been giving it every single week in a way, and I I'm not seeing it for her. Right. For I mean, either there's, of them. Right. There's six queens left. Dawn and Morphine haven't had any wins at all. Not minis, not mm-hmm. mains. Um and they, you know, have just a little bit of, of earnings. And I know that's not something to go by, but it does also kind of indicate at this stage, like in the game, like how you've done. Yeah. So, you know, it it definitely to me seems like the top four are going to be Nymphia, Plain, Q, and Sephira. Right. And right now I kind of feel like. I feel like Plains in fourth. Sephira's in first, and Nymphia and Q are in between. Are tied for, like, second? Maybe. One could one could go, it can go one to the other. Yeah, that's I mean, fair. I mean, and the thing that I'm struggling with is, like, Q is so talented and artistic, mm-hmm. but she doesn't have the full rounded package. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sephira really does, and Nymphia kind of does or does and hasn't fully shown us everything because she's a sketchy bitch and like hides everything. And anyways, never mind. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to fine, fine, fine. Call it shade. I call it tea. Anyways, uh, let's move on to eye rolls. Damon, who you, <laughs> sorry. I just read what you wrote. What you... What's your eye rolls for? So what I put down is no one has the power. I think it's going to fall kind of into what you put down. Mm. Um, I'm thinking in a way, maybe, maybe. We'll talk about it in a second. But um, episode 10, no one went home. They did a, I'm saying full T, a lackluster, like, funk ballad thing to get people to vote. And the whole thing behind it was like, no one would go home. And I was kind of like, well, cool. But it just felt very flat. It didn't feel necessary. It didn't feel needed. And on top of that, and I don't know if you're going to get into this with yours, this was the final week for the immunity potion. Well, they have that. That, that, that plane had, that was the final week. Let me rephrase. Right. So episode 10. Um, plain, this, she was told she had three weeks to use it. She was told back, you know, a few episodes, you know, a few episodes ago, blah, 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 blah. Why did we make this be the episode that it would expire when no one was going home? Well, I mean, here's the way I look at it. Rue told her you have three weeks to use it on yourself or somebody else. 
and Plane didn't use it, and Plane didn't use it, so Plane had to use it. And that's on her. She didn't choose to save anybody or save herself any earlier. So I feel like production knew, strategy-wise, what they were doing, and was like, well, this is how this plays out. Like, she mm-hmm. has no choice but to either use it herself or give it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Now, what I find interesting is, like, there was a couple paths forward. And I think all of the queens, except for Plain, were like, you should have drank the damn thing yourself. Mm-hmm. But you didn't. And you gave it to Nymphia, who was already higher than you in the mm-hmm. outcome of the episode. Mm-hmm. Which is probably not a good look for you. Yeah. Um, so that was, like, weird. And I agree with you. Like, why why was it, you know, when everyone was going to be safe? And I, I have mixed feelings on that because, like, when they were announcing names and then they said who was safe, immediately I was like, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. I and, even wrote WTF on my paper. Like and I, then you, <laughs> and then you get to the two that are remaining, and I was like, "There is no fucking way Saphir is in the bottom." I was no. like, "That is that is not happening on this day on this good green earth." God no, damn! Like, no, that was that was definitely. And then you to know, me, yeah. So the Rue had to call it out right away and was like, you know, nobody's going home. And then I, after a while, I thought about that, you know, Damon, and later I was like, you know. The queens had to know that. Like, the queens had to know know something was up and something was going on. Because you can't lip sync for the win without being told you have to prepare music. Right. So were all the queens told, like, the same song? And, like, production really reinforced it with them and is like, all of you need to, like, be sure that you know the song. Right. Which was so ten. It was made you look by Megan Trainer. Right. So yeah, um, I'm. I mean, or there's a part of me that's like, it, what? It, how different would the episode have been if they went into it knowing nobody was going home? Like if they just flat yeah. out told the girls. Congratulations, you've made it this far. We're going to give you a breather. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going home this week. But then they'd also have to tell... Now, this would have been funnier and more dramatic. If they ended up turning around and telling Plain, give us back the potion. Mm. Since you didn't use it, we're taking it back. Right. Because there's no point in it existing anymore. And we'll save it for another day and then cause some drama about like what's going to happen in the future, you know, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, and then you could just yeah. like forget about it because it was a MacGuffin and it didn't do anything, you know, and then like bring it back in another damn season or ball stars <sighs> or some bullshit. Yeah, it just it. Yeah, I agree. I just think it was something. And that's why I said like no one had the power in this one, because I felt like it was very much this was a like you said, almost kind of a throwaway. Yeah, this episode didn't need to exist. The ballot wasn't that great. The 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 message was okay, um, but we get you force fed this message. I know it's important, but we get kind of force fed this message every election year on RuPaul Drag Race. Well, and they Always normally do. every four years do a, a political debate. Yeah, I mean, my God, the last one, Jada Essence Hall is like one of the most infamous meme moments ever. And I was also surprised, right? Look over there. Like, I mean, like, it's a classic. And I'm really surprised that she didn't, or that not she, but well, like Will Rue in production, that they didn't do another debate. Yeah. They've done it twice before. Yeah. And they didn't do it this time. It was just weird. I was like, okay. Yeah. I, I think yeah, it was a knows? swing and a miss. I was like, y'all decided to, to do a number. Yeah. And I also think there were too many girls. I think the number... I, th- I, I think that... Right. I think it would have been better with six or with five. Mm. I think seven made it strange. I'm just saying. So anyways. Well, again, kind of adding to this, like, conspiracy theory bullshit kind of moment, 
if it was supposed to be seven, and then each girl's a rain- color of the rainbow, then you get the seven color of the rainbow. But that wasn't necessarily what we saw. Right. So again, it's just like, what is... Never mind. What is happening? <laughs> I, know. I know. I know. Whatever. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, it was, it was strange. It was strange. Gary, how about you? Oh, well, we were talking about it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I rolls for Play Jane's Immunity Giveaway. I have decided out of the graciousness of my heart. I don't know if those are the right words. This, it you know, matter. this like bullshit that she, you know, decided to give it to Nymphia because everybody was surprised, including Nymphia. Like Nymphia had been like pining for it. But I think Nymphia was well aware in that episode that they weren't in danger of going home. Mm-hmm. So Nymphia didn't expect it to come to her because she didn't need right. it. No. And it turns out no one needed it, but that's beside the point. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Mama, this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, no, she better don't. We're playing all of them tonight. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> I just, it, I just, I mean it. The nicest, that's what I mean. I feel that way. Like it, it wasn't necessary, but I agree. Like it just, it wasn't. She didn't need it. No, I agree. And nobody needed it. Yeah, no one needed it. That's why I just said, like, as I was spitballing that a moment ago and brainstorming, I was like, it would have been far more interesting production wise if they just took it back from her. Mm-hmm. And if Ruth said to her, you know. Plain, since you have not decided what you're going to do with it, we're taking it back from you. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been awesome. I would have loved to have seen Jane's face then. Because mm-hmm. then she would have immediately it- had to been like, oh, well, uh, of, of course, mother, you may have the potion back. Like, I mean, she would have been like, right, right, right. Like, she would have had to, like, suddenly pivot and figure out, like, what to do at that moment. So it just wasn't. Uh, it wasn't fun. No, and, felt... and, and so here's the thing: in all the MacGuffins of all the seasons, this is below chocolate. It is. It is. The chocolate bar was kind of weird. It was strange. It was stupid, and then it got funny because it just kept going, <laughs> and it was like a sad trombone thing, and like it just kept I mean, it happening. Really was. Right, and it just uh. I know, and it just kept happening over and over again, you know, and it was like, and everybody was looking forward to it not being like the thing it was supposed to be. Everyone just kind of knew you're going home, girl. You're going home, girl. Like it just became a meme in and of itself, and it did kind of pay off when yeah it saved Bosco, but yeah. But, and again, but like, so to is, me, yeah. the chocolate bar was a better stunt than the, than the potion. And I think I know why. Because chocolate tastes Because better? there are only two. Well, mm, whatever. Listen, listen. Here, here's the thing, <laughs> listeners and, and, and viewers. Dave and I actually ate the chocolate, just for the record. <laughs> like, we got those candy bars back in that season. We yes. gave we gave Rue some some Rue dollars. We got some of them yes. some candy bars, and I will say the candy bars were not bad. Yeah, they're pretty good. Better than the House of Love cocktails, apparently. But that's you know a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly those so, things are bad. And nobody likes them. So <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny you mentioned that because we were at when we were in Vegas. We saw, we went to the the RuPaul's Drag Race live. And we bought just like some like regular cocktails because we were at the table. It wasn't until later they like, weren't they hawking them and like pushing them on you. No, 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 no. They weren't pushing them. They just announced it like during the show. Oh. And we did. We didn't think about it. Oh, they. I guess they have them. Like, oh, we didn't even think about it. Like there was a poster. Like we weren't close. And this isn't. A, this isn't to you and Jim. This is to them. Shame on. Shame yeah. on. World of Wonder. Maybe. They, Why they the fuck like, were they not shoving that shit in your face the moment you walk in the door? Hi, welcome to RuPaul's Drag Race Live. You should really consider getting House of Love cocktails. Look at all <laughs> the varieties and the flavors and the non-alcoholic. Yeah. Like I yeah. would have expected was, to be so annoyed a, with that. There was was there like 
pre-show commercial? I feel like there was. I could be wrong. Mm. It's it's. It was in January, y'all. That was two months ago. I don't remember. Shit. <laughs> um, like, 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 just gonna call it what it is. Right. Um, but uh, I, I do, I know it was during the show. I do remember something during the show where they mentioned it specifically. Um, but the, you know, the, the, the servers that come around, the cocktail waitresses mm-hmm. or you know, cocktail servers that come around. I don't recall them mentioning it. I don't recall them having like bling with like House of Loves on it, whatever. It's fine. They do have, they were selling them in their gift shop. Like that part. But. Well, because, um, right, because it's our, because it's already canned and it's ready to go and you can take it with you, right, like when you leave. Right. You can just take it with you. But it's but, more um, telling to me that they weren't giving out shots. They weren't giving out samples. They weren't really promoting it. And I'm like, girl. Yeah. So I've not I I've yet to have one. And don't and don't tell me none of these people lived in the nineties when you and I did. You couldn't go to a goddamn gay bar and not have shit shoved at you nonstop. Sky vodka, Smirnoff. Off ice. Smirnoff off ice, ice honey. Like Captain Morgan, Zima when it came back. Like all mm-hmm. this shit was shoved at us. Like there were always alcohol reps. They were like promoting that stuff. God damn, you are so right. If if it God. wasn't that, it was free cigarettes. I mean, like, <laughs> girl, they were in the clubs, they were in the bars, they were in the taverns. They were. They were yes. in freaking Leather Eagle. And they're like, would you like some free cigarettes? You just have to sign this waiver form that you're not going to sue or ask because we're killing you. Um, you know, I mean, like, this is what they were doing back in the day. It was crazy. And that's yes, where I I'm just sh- that. I'm just shocked that, that I remember getting I remember that getting none of them are doing yeah. that like that they're not coming around yeah. like I I mean I get it, it it's a casino it's a little classier but I'm just like really yeah. like no little like little thimble tasters or whatever and be like something. would you like yeah. to try our house of well, love like mango margarita or something it's wild yeah. wild it, yeah Anyways. just something it, it it was it was something anyway. Total tangent. Apologies. Total fucking tangent. (laughs) Well, it's more entertaining than the last two episodes that we just watched. Just saying. Just saying. Oh, it went away. There we go. There we go. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Right there. I mean, let's be real. We had two more episodes, and the only thing that happened was Safira got more money, Q got pissed off, um, and Morphine stuck around, and, and, you know, Maya Maya finally fucking went home. Sorry. But that's and the it flips, flipped on out of the door. Anyway. Yeah. Moving on. So there's that. It's fine. All it's right. Fine. So you've listened to us rabble on. I'm sure you have opinions as well. And there's plenty of ways you can let us know about them. You can go to our blog, CubsOutloud.com. You can leave a comment there. Uh, you can also get in touch with us directly. You can give us a phone call. 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. And if talking's not your thing. You can send us an email, cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Tell us what your thoughts are. You can pretty much find us on most social media uh, platforms, typing in Cubs Out Loud as one word. If you want to join our little chat online, you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R to know when we're doing the actual, uh, the actual, wow, <laughs> to know when we're doing the main live show uh, streaming to YouTube. You can go to tinyurl.com slash calendar hyphen C-O-L. If you want to support us here at Cubs Out Loud, there are three options, and they are very lovely options. The first one is go to Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and there you can get various accoutrements, uh, items that are slathered with logos and and sayings and things. So as Damon is showing off, this is the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race uh, official logo. So it is our bear head uh, with the drag race and the crown on it because, you know, everyone loves a roaring queen. Um, you also have our uh, Consent is My Foreplay shirt uh, design series from Smashy. Um, we have one that's actually the drag pride colors as well. We got coffee mugs. We got yoga mats. We got shower curtains. We got T-shirts, hats, all sorts of things. We even hats, got a damn bat, purse. Shoes, booze. Yeah. Um, buys potpourri. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting Rent. Don't worry about me. That's, that's okay. Um, but if that's not your gig. You can actually become a patron. You can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud and for a dollar a month or more, depending on what you uh, feel gracious with, you can join our Patreon and you get the full unedited episodes uh, of both COL Drag Race and COL itself. 
Or if you just want to give us a donation, you can give us a one-time tip. We'll gladly take just the tip. You can go to paypal.me slash cubsoutloud and you can uh, make a one-time monetary donation to us. Helps keep the lights on, as we like to say. And in terms of Cubs Out Loud, you can pretty much find us uh, anywhere that you listen to your podcast. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race has its own RSS feed, which means you can listen to just these particular episodes if you want um, for podcasting. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they do so? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCub79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umber on Twitter or Pup Umber 79 on Blue Sky. Both of those are not safe for work. For safe for work, you can go to DMAGamer79 on Twitter or TikTok. If you want to find me, you can pretty much uh, look up GearBear73 anywhere online. In terms of the drag race items, I created my own Twitter account that's uh, GearBear73 DRAG. Everything is like sequestered and secluded over to there on purpose yeah. because uh, I don't want to be spoiled. Um, I was very close to being spoiled on this most recent episode while I was in Detroit. And funnily enough, I could have technically watched it if I had remembered that um drag race was on mtv and not vh1 um because i was in my hotel room at like eight o'clock um i got home got there in time and i was like oh cool so i went to go get food but i was like oh i'm not gonna watch it because it's on vh1 and it wasn't until like nine something right that um i was looking i was like i guess it, it is i could watch it and i turned i did turn to it i caught like five seconds before i was like nope just don't worry about it like right 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 because i couldn't watch it anyway no that makes sense live tv well it's not like they keep bouncing around on networks or anything and you know hot mm-hmm. scotching and making it difficult for yeah. people to see the damn show yeah just saying all right so with that uh we will be back in a couple of weeks uh by my estimation we have four episodes left because we have six queens left, so we're going to lose one queen. We're going to lose another queen. We'll be down to top four. We'll have a reunion in between the finale. And then we'll do a finale. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's probably just two more episodes out of us, and then um, that's kind of it. And I'm kind of hoping and praying uh, that All-Stars, they're going to like take a breather on. Yeah. before Because they haven't announced anything yet. No, they haven't. But- and then Bussy just announced that apparently there's a rumor swirling around that there's going to be a global All-Stars. So that'll be okay. interesting. Right. <sighs> it's something to think about. But in the meantime, <laughs> we'll be back in a couple of weeks. So we appreciate you like listening and or watching. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.